This video accompanies introduction to coroutines and channels hands-on lab. Read the lab text before watching the video. We are going to dive into details of how the following code works under the hood. We create two coroutines. The first one is started by the run blocking function. For convenience, let's call it main. The second one is started by a sync. Let's call it load data. For simplicity, let's modify a bit our example and start the second coroutines on a new thread. We specify a default departure, which means that this coroutine will be started on a new thread from the common pool. At the end of this video, we'll also roll back to the previous version without a departure. Let's follow this code line by line in order to understand what's happening here. At first, run blocking starts a new coroutine. Because we call it from the main function, it started on the main thread. Then when we call a sync and pass a lambda to it, we start a new coroutine. Dispatcher's default tells us to start it on a, new, on a thread from the thread pool. We'll call this thread t1. We store the reference to the started coroutine in a deferred object. Later we'll use this reference to obtain the resulting value from the coroutine. Let's see what happens next. The main coroutine prints waiting. We can see it in the program output. In the meantime, the load data coroutine started on a different thread prints loading. If we run this program on a multi-core machine, then our coroutines running on different threads will run in parallel. There is no guarantee that first waiting is printed, then loading. Both options are possible. Let's return now to the main coroutine and see what it's doing. We call a wait on the deferred object. That suspends the main coroutine until the result of the second load data coroutine is available. If the result was ready, it would be returned and the code would continue its flow. In this case, however, the result is not yet computed, so the main coroutine gets suspended. In the meantime, the second coroutine calls delay. Delay suspends the outer coroutine for a given amount of time. Here, it suspends load data coroutine for one second. Note that despite we discussed the code in this order, there is no guarantee what happens first, a wait call or delay call, when the corresponding coroutines run in parallel on different threads. We reach the state when both coroutines are suspended. Note that both threads are free and can be occupied with other tasks if needed. After one second, load data coroutine is resumed and restored to the thread. It continues the execution and prints loaded. The load data function returns 42. It becomes the result of the whole coroutine, since the load data function invocation is the last expression inside the lambda. When the load data coroutine returns the result, it wakes up the main coroutine which was suspended waiting for this result. The main coroutine is resumed. A wait call returns 42 and 42 gets printed. In this simple example, we call delay and return the fixed value, but we try to model a suspendable network request. Sending the request instead of delay works in a similar way. The routine from which you send the request gets suspended until it receives the response. You can run the same sample using log instead of println and also see the timing and what threads the coroutines run on. Open this sample in the project corresponding to this tutorial. You can see that indeed the first coroutine runs on the main thread, while the second coroutine runs on the thread from the thread pool. Waiting and loading get printed basically at the same time. In my case, two coroutines indeed run simultaneously. If we return to our initial version, and run load data coroutine without providing the explicit departure as an argument, that will automatically run new coroutine on the same thread. It's impossible to run two coroutines on the same thread at the same time. The load data coroutine gets scheduled on the main thread. 
but it starts running only after the main coroutine gets suspended and the thread gets free. We've discussed what's going on under the hood in this simple example. Hope that helps to better understand how coroutines work.